All right, forensic students, welcome back. Today we are starting on forensic toxicology, which is always an interesting subject. I think that you'll find it interesting anyway. Um, but forensic toxicology is the study of adverse effects of different drugs and chemicals on different biological systems of the human body. So basically, it's concerned with quantities and effects of different drugs and poisons on the human body, usually as it pertains to death. So today, we're going to look at toxicology and try to understand why it's important um, in the field of forensics. And then we're also going to talk about uh, different bodily effects of certain drugs and chemicals. And we're even going to take that a step further and learn about the classification of drugs. And we're going to learn how they're scheduled um, according to the DEA. And then we'll uh, start to talk about how toxicologists identify toxins in the body. Now, we're going to do that in part two. So right now you're watching part one of forensic toxicology. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of research at the end of part one. And then for part two of forensic toxicology, we're actually going to get into the role of a toxicologist. All right, so if you have taken physical science or chemistry, you have learned about chemicals. So we know that by definition, a chemical is a compound or a different substance. They're often made synthetically uh, that's comprised of different elements. And some chemicals are toxic. Some are not. Uh, so I'm going to just show you a chart. And if you'll look at the chart, um, you will notice that on the left hand side, you have a list of materials that are considered toxic. And on the right side, you have a list of materials that are considered non toxic. And as you look at these, you may think to yourself, wait a minute, some of these on the toxic side aren't necessarily toxic. Remember, toxic does not necessarily equate to death. For example, if I'm bitten by a rattlesnake, um, I'm going to be exposed to venom. Venom is toxic, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to lead to my death. So toxin just means it is toxic to the body or the organ systems or tissues within the body. Um, on the other side of that, things that are in the non-toxic category can also be toxic. For example, if uh, I'm allergic to acetaminophen and I'm exposed to it, then that could prove to be toxic to my body. If I ingest too much ibuprofen, then again, that, that could lead to um, something that is toxic to my body. So it depends on who you are and how your body reacts to some of these as to whether they would be in the toxic or non-toxic category. They all, though, are considered to be chemicals. All right, so I don't know if you know the lady in the picture here. Um, this might kind of tell my age, but this is Anna Nicole Smith. She was, um, back in the early 2000s, late 90s, she was an American model. She was also an actress, and she died just suddenly and very mysteriously in around 2007, I believe. Um, and so she was in the tabloids a lot, and so there was a lot of um, questions about how she died, why she died. And so, of course, her body was sent off for an autopsy since it was a suspicious death. And a medical examiner, um, a medical examiner produced an autopsy report for the world to see. And they um, determined that she died of an accidental overdose of prescription medications. Now, the medical examiner had to work with the pathologist and had to work with the forensic investigators to figure this out. So there was a whole full-fledged investigation done where they had to look into the death of Anna Nicole Smith. Um, and there was a lot of there was a lot of pressure put on the toxicologist at that time. Everybody wanted to know how she died, um, what she died from, and so of course the toxicologist was the person that was ultimately responsible for figuring out how Anna Nicole Smith died. All right, so the role of a toxicologist is to identify and quantify the presence of drugs and chemicals in the blood system and in tissue samples. 
And this is done several different ways, but um, it is an advanced, it is an advanced science where they are constantly using state-of-the-art chemical and biomedical instruments. They detect small amounts of toxic materials. Not only do they have to positively identify those toxins, but then they have to have a way of accurately measuring how much of that toxin is present. Um, and could it have led to cause of death or the death of a person? If you have some time, pause the video and do a quick YouTube search of the role of a forensic toxicologist. There is a good video that sort of shows the beh behind the scenes of a toxicologist. Um, and it's really good at showing, especially if you have an interest in, in this as a career, um, you can take a look at that video. And um, I personally think it does a great job of showcasing the role of a forensic toxicologist. So take a look at that if that's something that you have time to do. All right, we'll just keep moving on. So some drugs are referred to as toxins. Um, now, drugs are classified according to what we call schedules. And in 1990, there was something that was produced called the Classification Drug Act of 1990. Um, it has since changed names. Now it's called the Controlled Substances Act. So you can do a Google search of Classification Drug Act of 1990. Lots of stuff will pop up. But if you are wanting the most recent information and data, you are going to search Controlled Substances Act. Both of these um, place drugs into categories. Okay, now there are currently five schedules of drugs. This changes. So by the time you watch this video, there may have been a sixth schedule added. Or I know when I first started teaching forensics, there were only four schedules. So currently, um, at the recording of this video, there are five schedules of drugs, and the different schedules are based on three different factors. So potential for abuse, basically how likely is it for the drug to be abused, um, accepted medical use, so is this drug used as a treatment in the United States, and is it safe or is there a potential for addiction? Um, so how likely is it this drug to cause addiction? What kinds of addiction? Because um, there's different levels within that. So Schedule 1 drugs have the highest potential for abuse um, and the potential to create severe psychological and physical dependence. And as these drug schedules change, so as you move from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2 to Schedule 3 and so on, so does the potential for abuse. So your Schedule 5 drugs represent the least potential for abuse. This might be your over-the-counter medications like Tylenol or ibuprofen. So a listing of the most current drug schedules can be found if you do a search for Controlled Substances Act. Or if you go to the DEA's website, they always keep an updated list of the different drugs and their schedules. Um, so let's talk a little bit more in detail about um, different um, schedules of drugs. So Schedule 1 drugs are substances or chemicals that are defined as drugs that have no currently accepted medical use and also a high potential for abuse. So some examples of Schedule 1 drugs would be like heroin, LSD, marijuana, and you might be thinking, er, wait a minute, um, a lot of states are legalizing marijuana in the United States. Um, and while that is true, um, at the recording of the video, when it comes to marijuana, the DEA has listed it as a Schedule 1 drug because the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, has determined that there is no current accepted medical use for marijuana in the United States. Um, do I think that this will change? Um, I think so. Uh, so we do, it's important, I'm not sure when you're watching this video, but it's important to note that it is currently 2021 and currently marijuana is listed as a Schedule 1 drug because the FDA has a determined that there's no accepted medical use for marijuana. Um, so legal and what the DEA calls a Schedule drug, Schedule 1 drug, aren't necessarily synonymous with one another. All right, so Schedule 2 drugs are substances or chemicals that are defined as drugs with a high potential for abuse, um, 
it could, the use of it could potentially lead to severe psychological and physical dependence like that of Schedule 1 drugs. Um, and they're still considered dangerous, but a little less so than Schedule 1 drugs. So this might be your prescription pain medicines um, like methadone or oxycodone or fentanyl. Um, Adderall also falls in this category. Um, so those are your Schedule 2 drugs. And then Schedule 3 drugs are substances or chemicals that are defined as drugs with moderate to low potential for physical and psychological dependence. Um, so, and these seem to fluctuate. So, for, from year to year, Schedule 3 drugs sometimes bump up to Schedule 4, sometimes they bump down to Schedule 2. So, again, you need to make sure that you do some more research on this um, if you're looking for a particular drug. So this, some examples of Schedule 3 drugs would include Tylenol with codeine, which of course you'd have to have a prescription for. Um, anabolic steroids also fall in this category, like testosterone. Your Schedule 4 drugs would um, be drugs that have a low potential for abuse and a low risk of dependency. So this would be like Xanax, uh, Soma, Darvacet, Valium, um, sleeping medications like Ambien or um, Tramadol. And then your Schedule 5 drugs are drugs with lower potential for abuse than Schedule 4 um, and consist of limited amounts of narcotics. So this would be like cough medicines um, or different medicines that you can get over the counter like Lyrica. Um, so you can see sort of on the screen you have different drugs that you have to classify. Um, if you are one of my students, you will be completing this worksheet. If you are not and you're interested in figuring out which of these drugs belong to what schedule, then head over to the DEA's website. Again, you're looking for the Controlled Substances Act because that's how um, the DEA classifies drugs and toxins. Um, so take a look at that and I will see you in part two of the Forensic Toxicology video.